What do cork manufacturing and car manufacturing have in common? Not much, you'd imagine. Turns out, in the case of one car manufacturing company, quite a lot. This is the story of the only car company in the world that started out as a cork manufacturing plant. The story of Mazda. It's 1888. A young boy from Hiroshima won't be attending school. His father is a fisherman, and he's the very youngest of 12 siblings, so school is just not an option for him. So when he turns 13, he moves to nearby Osaka, where he's apprenticed to a blacksmith. At this point, the boy develops a passion for machinery and manufacturing. In fact, he's so interested in machines that during his work breaks, he visits and learns from other factories. Boy, there's someone who takes his work seriously. This boy's name is Jujiro Matsuda, and he will become the founder of Mazda, one of the world's best known car manufacturers. It's now 1906. He invents a pump. Then he is fired from the blacksmith company, so he starts his own company manufacturing armaments. He calls the company Matsuda Works. He starts supplying rifles to the Japanese army and also gets a license to export to Russia. He does well, makes a lot of money, and soon becomes an industrialist to be reckoned with. Not bad for a man who didn't even go to school and was fired from his first job. Now it's 1921. A company back in his hometown of Hiroshima is on the verge of bankruptcy. The Hiroshima Savings Bank and other business leaders in Hiroshima offer Jujiro the opportunity take over the management of the company. He returns home to do this. This company produces cork. It makes sense for a cork producing company to be based in Hiroshima. The area is full of cork oak trees and there's a ready market in the local shipbuilding industry. Jujiro doesn't have any experience in the cork industry, but this doesn't stop him from coming up with a lot of great ideas. One of his ideas is to produce pressed cork boards. That's a pretty good idea considering how useful they are. Although he wasn't the first person to invent that honor goes to George Brooks of Topeka, Kansas, who got his patent for the use of corkboard as a bulletin board, which you could just slip tacks into. But Jujiro's real love is machines. So it's not long before he begins to influence what the company manufactured. It's now six years later. He renames the company Toyo Kojio. They start shifting from manufacturing cork to manufacturing machine. It's now 1931. Toyo Kojio produces its first vehicle. It's a pivotal moment for the company. Let's talk about the timing of the vehicle. Mitsubishi Motors already brought out the Mitsubishi A-type passenger car way back in 1917. But Nissan has only just begun. Toyota's A1-type passenger car will only be released in 1935, and Honda will only be established in 1946. So we see that Mazda is an early starter in automobile manufacturing in Japan. The Mazda Go is a three-wheeled open truck that looks a bit like a motorcycle with a wagon or cargo bed. It is clearly a workhorse, built to serve farmers and small businessmen. It's steered by a handlebar and has a single seat and its engine has a reverse gear. The engine is built in-house and it and other components are patented by the company. The three wheels are situated as far out as the chassis they can go and maximize both cabin and load space. It is considered to be the first three-wheel auto rickshaw ever built. Now you're thinking, great, but seriously, why don't they just put four wheels on it? Four wheels are definitely more stable. It's hard to take a three-wheeler seriously. Actually, there are quite a few reasons for this and why the three-wheelers lasted so long. The main reason is taxes. Three-wheel trucks are charged less than four-wheeler trucks, even if the four-wheeler trucks are smaller. Many officials decided that since there are only three wheels instead of four on the road, it doesn't cause as much wear and tear. I'm not sure about that. Sure, you got one less tire on the road, but the three tires are carrying the same weight. What does make sense is that one less wheel means you save on production costs. You only have to pay for three wheels instead of four. Plus, having one wheel in the front and two at the back also reduces the cost of the steering mechanism. So three-wheel designs aren't uncommon elsewhere in the world for that matter. 
In fact, the 1885 Benz Patent motor wagon is regarded as the first purpose-built automobile and it only has three wheels too. In the U.S., three-wheelers are classed as motorcycles, so manufacturers can take the advantage of their lower safety regulations. Not really a good reason to make a three-wheel vehicle, if you ask me. There are other reasons as well why three-wheelers are so popular in Japan. A single front wheel made the trucks better at navigating the twisting mountain roads and the crazy crowded cities. Japan has a long history with two back wheels, and it's believed to be the first rickshaws were invented there in the 1860s. Of course, a rickshaw didn't have a front wheel, but rather a human runner. Rickshaws became an inexpensive popular mode of transportation across the whole of Asia. The word rickshaw originates from the Japanese word genri kisha. Jin means human, riki means power or force, and sha means vehicle. So it literally means a human powered vehicle. The original rickshaws were themselves inspired by another mode of transportation, the horse drawn carriage. Rickshaws became popular because they were cheaper than a horse carriage. They were originally used to transport goods, but soon became a popular method of passenger transport. By 1872, there were 40,000 rickshaws operating in Japan. It was a chief form of transportation. Runners covered 20 to 30 miles a day, traveling at around 5 miles an hour. That is insane. The use of rickshaws spread rapidly to other eastern countries, and then a few years later, the first cycle rickshaws appeared, first used widely in Singapore. So it's easy to see why Mazda's first vehicle is an auto rickshaw with three wheels. Innovations and ideas don't just appear out of nowhere. They're influenced by other innovations and trends. Other manufacturers copy each other. But sometimes, two absolutely similar ideas happen on other ends of the world with the inventors having no knowledge of each other's inventions. While it seems like a crazy coincidence, it's not really. Both inventors have been influenced by similar trends, and this means two people can have the same exact new idea at the same exact time. So, for whatever reason, it was only months later that Daihatsu's three-wheel truck appeared in Japan. The three-wheel truck soon appeared all around the world, and it's been around in one form or another since then. But back to 1931, where Mazda Go is the latest technology to hit the road. It's distributed by Mitsubishi Network and soon exported to China. The Mazda Go puts the Toyo Kogio company on the road to become a major car manufacturer. Of course, it will be many years before the company officially adopts the name Mazda, but unofficially the name is right there at the very beginning. And in many countries, the company is known as Mazda long before it officially adopts the name. So where does the name Mazda originate? Jujiro is a spiritual man, and it's no surprise that he chooses a name that means something to him. Mazda comes from Ahura Mazda, the Persian god of wisdom and the highest spirit worship in Zoroastrianism. Of course, it may be no coincidence that Mazda sounds similar to Matsuda. Family names are important in Japan. It is not unusual for a family to use an adoption to ensure that the name is continued. If a family has sufficient property but lacks an heir, they readily adopt a son-in-law to carry on the lineage. It is more important to carry on the continuity of the family name and the worship of family ancestors than to carry on the bloodline. Jujiro Matsuda adopts a son-in-law, Suniji Matsuda. It's not surprising Mazda, who invents the memorable Zoom Zoom advertising campaign, is involved in advertising from early on. Zoom Zoom. It's 1936. They launched the Kagoshima to Tokyo caravan campaign. Four Mazda Go Type KC and one Mazda Go Type DC take the road in a caravan. They travel a total of 1,670 miles from Kagoshima to Tokyo in 25 days. Okay, so that's only 67 miles a day. It doesn't seem fast, especially if you consider that a man named Henry Ford had just brought out the first mass-produced car with a V8 engine and achieved speeds of 76 miles an hour. But that company is a continent away, although it will soon become an important part of Mazda's story. That's a story that we're still coming through. Back in Japan, the campaign promotes excellence and reliability to its customers. It is very successful and sales of Mazda vehicles increase enormously. This little caravan of drivers puts Mazda on the map, both literally and figuratively. It's 1936 form of going viral. Mazda becomes a known brand in Japan. Now it's the morning of August 6, 1945. It's a special day for Jujiro Masuda, as it's his birthday. He is downtown Hiroshima for the traditional birthday haircut. It's bright and early and Jujiro is a busy and commanding man. 
He arrives at the barbershop early. It opens at 7.30 a.m. and he wants to be first in line. He just manages to get ahead of another man heading to the shop with the same idea. So within half an hour, Chijiro's hair is freshly cut and he's on his way back to the Mazda factory. Above him, the Enola Gay, American B-29 Super Fortress bomber carrying the little boy atomic bomb, is moving silently and steadily towards its target. It releases its deadly payload, the world's first atomic bomb to be used in war. It contains the equivalent of between 12,000 and 15,000 tons of TNT. A blinding fireball explodes overhead, above a point in the city which is just 50 yards from Masuda's harbor. It unleashes a devastating shockwave and obliterates an area of five square miles, instantly killing 80,000 people, including Jujiro's youngest son. A couple of miles away, the shockwave blows Jujiro's car off the road, ejecting both him and his driver. If you like this episode, please support us by sharing this video.